You know, part of me thinks that the social engineering is just the easiest way <laughs> to manipulate humans and to play on our fears and our, 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 our other hopes and dreams. It seems like a really cost-effective way to do that. Um, do you think about that sometimes and, and how we can all easily be swayed and now with all sorts of different ways to manipulate reality, how that could be a possibility? I, I think Harari kind of po po posited that as, as these machines creating these super religions of the future where we won't even know the narrative that we're following is AI generated. That's definitely a concern. So my background in cybersecurity, and usually we are concerned about direct hacking, zero-day exploits. But if you have that level of capability in terms of social engineering attacks, that's much more powerful, almost undefensible. And yes, you can have persistent deepfakes, not just an image you show, not just a video with sound, but over weeks, over months, you can display something absolutely made up to a person shifting their behavior in a direction you would like to see. Hmm. Wow. Um, something you've gone deep on, which is, you know, what does this kind of mid game or end game look like? And you've talked about some really interesting, you know, game, game scenarios here are end games. And you've talked about these three things. You talked about something called X risk, S risk, and I risk. And I think they're interesting because like you said, as humans, sometimes you know, we're trying to think of the way it gets exterminated or we think, oh, the end game is everybody dies, but there's actually other alternatives. Some would consider them worse. And so could you break down that kind of X, S and I risk? Yeah, so we can get progressively worse, I guess. We start with iris, where we're talking about ikigai risks, a uh, Japanese concept for having meaning to your life, being able to earn a living, doing something you're good at, something you love, something helpful to society. If uh, we do create super intelligent machines, full automation of labor, physical, cognitive, they are as capable or more capable as artists, sports, what is the meaning? What can you contribute to superintelligence? It's not obvious, and it completely challenges our social structure. Most of us define ourselves in terms of our occupations, professions. You're a podcaster, I'm a researcher. If that goes away, what do you do with yourself, with your free time? We don't have simple solutions to that. We talk about unconditional basic income in terms of financial compensation for loss of employment. But we're not talking about unconditional basic meaning, something everyone can contribute and still be an important part of society. So that's high risk. Uh, X risk is existential risks, concerns that we all are much worse off. Society is damaged in some way. It doesn't necessarily mean that everyone is dead, but it's a possibility as well. And finally, you talk about uh, S risks, uh, which are suffering risks. For some reason, you are not dead, but you definitely wish you were. Yeah, I reread 1984 recently by Orwell, who actually wrote it right near where I live here in London. And that looks like a bit of an S risk, perhaps. You know, there's this society that's set up, not obvious who's running it, but technology is a huge part of it, this ubiquitous technology. And it looks like a long-term suffering game. Uh, I, guess, I guess that could look a bunch of ways, right? But I, that's what I think of when I think of potentially one of those scenarios. Absolutely. I remember in a book uh, where they have a device which reads your mind to figure out your worst fears and optimizes for that. That would be an example. Absolutely. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking the end of that book and it's, it's a bit of a dark read or listen, I listen to it. Um, yeah. They actually take him into his deepest fears. He doesn't really know how they know, but he takes them there. Um, you mentioned universal basic income, and I maybe want to go a little deeper on that because I always hear that touted by so many people as this obvious and perfect solution. And for me, it never sat right with me at all. I don't see that as a solution. First of all, I see a huge modicum of control by some entity that, that doles out that income. But also, I realize in my life that my struggles and my purpose is, is such a big part of my life. And I can't imagine a place where I, I wouldn't have to do things, I guess, to survive. Um, what are your thoughts on, on UBI? Also, you know, this kind of world coin and this iris scanner and one of the Altman's projects, I think is, is trying to kind of offer that as a solution. What, what does your gut feel about that? So I'm not against a basic safety net where food and emergency medical care and things of that nature are basically given to everyone because it's the lowest 
level a human being should be at. Anything above that, anything you want to be special, to be sort of what rich elite people enjoy today, should be earned, should be something based on uh, your performance uh, merit, in my opinion. So uh, it's a mixed answer. It helps avoid uh, obvious problem with extreme technical unemployment. Uh, we, we've seen what happens then 10, 20, 30 percent of population is unemployed. We never seen what happens at 80, 90 and above. And it's probably not pretty. It's pretty ugly and you want to avoid those violent revolutions. So you do need to provide some sort of safety net for people. Now, again, this is just a small part of it, financial aspect. What about free time, social interactions? All that is definitely not resolved. Uh, what Altman is doing with WorldCoin is uh, not obvious. So he's definitely trying to get personal accounts for every human in the world. Yes, 8 billion accounts. So everyone is known, everyone is tracked, everyone is accessible. And it's interesting to see that he kind of plans for succeeding with his AGI project. He already has another startup for generating uh, energy in sufficient qualities to do that. And now we see this uh, WorldCoin project with uh, both uh, controlling and manipulating financial aspects of the system at a global scale. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, do you want to profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it. Listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, got to do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener, coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. You took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. That's of course it's been like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top-notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, 
You gotta pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not gonna regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.